I have never before shot a film on a Tesla Model S, but today I have the quick one, the P100D, and something more analog to drag it against. I'm sitting in a Tesla Model S for the first time in a long, long time, actually. I've only ever driven one of these before. I've slightly chosen to ignore the whole Tesla thing because it scares me and I'm not very much into them. But we have a P100D today because everyone's been telling me that I have to drive one. It's amazing. It's so fast. So we're here at Bruntingthorpe to go fast. I have no idea how it works. So just off camera here is my boss, Charles Turner, who is going to tell me how to turn it on. Okay. Charles, away you so go. Press the controls button. Chris. Controls button. There we go. Okay, first thing we need to do is... Uh, wow, condition. look at that. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Condition the battery. So if you press under ludicrous mode, max battery power. Where's ludicrous mode? Ludicrous mode is up there. There, there, yeah, there. Put underneath it, press that. Yep. And go max battery power. Max battery power. Yep. So that's done. Get rid of that. Yep. The next thing you need to do is to activate the ludicrous plus Easter egg. You need to hold down the ludicrous icon in the drive settings for five seconds and select yes, bring it on. What? Press ludicrous for five seconds. Right. Now what? It should do something. Yeah. So I've got a light speed. It looks like the Millennium Falcon going into light speed. It says here, are you sure you want to push the limits? This will cause accelerated wear of the motor, gearbox and battery. I'm offered no, I want my mummy, M-O-M-M-Y, or yes, bring it on. Yes, bring it on. It's heating and it's, it's estimating it's 10 minutes for it to heat. Right. Simple then. Yeah. It's not the kind of thing you just activate down in Battersea in the traffic lights, is it? No. No. Let's go and have a drag race. Um, what would you drag race it against? I'd drag race it against an icon of modern day performance that doesn't necessarily want to go that fast in a straight line of its own accord. In other words, requires some driver input. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 911R. Oh my lord! Okay, the 0 to 100 mile an hour challenge is over and the 911 is absolutely roasted. I'm sorry I couldn't talk, but that's genuinely the first time I've done that. Wow. It explodes off the line. I mean, it's explosive, the acceleration. And I can see why people are so addicted to it. Oh, that's great fun. Okay, I'm being slightly quiet and contemplative because I've not experienced that sort of acceleration in a saloon car shape before. But my criticism of the Tesla Model S and its performance variants is that I think they're one trick ponies. And I also think that acceleration in the modern era is about more than just going from zero to 100. I want to know whether this thing is fast from zero to 150. <laughs> It's absurd, right. So, can he get ahead for a 150 mile an hour challenge? That's 110, and he's pegged me now. He's pegged me, 120, he's coming back at me. 130, he's coming back at me. 140, he's coming back at me. 150 miles an hour, and it's, it's beaten the 911R to 150. I didn't expect that. Slight change of, uh, of plan here, which Neil won't like. I want to drive the 911 because I've got this awful feeling that I can, make it, I can make it get a bit closer. And I want to see what this thing looks like from the other car. I want to see what a, you know, a two-ton saloon car doing 0 to 60 in two point something seconds looks like. Wow. So Charles has had to go and cool the battery down. It seems to have a very narrow operator window. It's either too hot or too cold. I had an auntie like that once. Never quite get the temperature right for it. It's always too hot or too cold. Give me a glass of water, dear. Okay, there's some water to cool down. Oh, I haven't got a blanket, have you? That's the Tesla Model S, like my auntie. Okay, so here we go. Zero to 150 miles an hour. Look at it go. So that's... 100, 110, I'm catching him. 120, I've got you! 911 R is coming up, 130 and it's gone! Yes! Yeah, at 135 we just go. 
now I'm doing 170. He can't do that. So, it is just a zero to 120 mile an hour machine. That's what it is. It absolutely nails it to 120. But then, yeah, the good old internal combustion engine comes good. Dead impressive. Dead impressive. Do you know what? By both cars. <laughs> Little grin in that 911 hour. Keeping petrol power alive. You gotta say though, this thing is so impressive. <laughs> I rest my case. People in the car and they make noises when it accelerates because it's unusually fast. We've done the drag race thing and we proved that it's really fast to 120. We kind of already knew that because the internet is alive with drag racing videos of these things munching hypercars and supercars from rest to 120. What I want to know, is it any good on the road? The ride's not bad, but I've got a bit of vertical movement that I wasn't expecting, so it, it gets itself quite airborne. This is a bumpy road though. There's a little bit of noise in the cabin. This is the other thing. In not having engine and transmission noise, if you hear a little creak or something from the dash, you really notice it. 130,000 pounds for this model. This is the Mac Daddy, this is everything. So this is all the performance and all the range. Um, doesn't feel like that inside here at all. The big screen is most impressive. You'll see it in a minute. I'll put my hand over it. It is double the size of anything I've ever seen in another car before. It's very much next gen. So I can see the uh, autopilot thing spotting me exactly on the road. It's got the two cars in front of me positioned perfectly. No, it knows what's going on. I get the feeling it knows things about me that I don't want it to know. Like it knows some of the bad things I did at prep school. It's the regenerative braking that's the, the most obvious thing. And it leaves you out of sync with other traffic because when you back off, it regens and gives you a lot of automatic braking without touching the brake pedal. So when you go to brake, all the other cars coast like a normal car coasts, but this thing stops faster. So you have to sort of cover the throttle a bit like you're driving on automatic in traffic. I quite like the sparseness. At this speed, it is incredibly quiet. I mean, it's quieter than an S class. In town, I can completely see why people love these things. Because for the traffic light Grand Prix, it's unbeatable and I suppose the lack of noise is is appealing in, in that respect and all of this is so sci-fi it's so next gen I sort of wonder why the exterior looks so conventional sort of like a two or three box hatchback when they had the chance to to redesign everything because they don't have the constraints of a transmission tunnel do they or a, a normal engine 130,000 pounds but you don't have to put fossil juice in it but how much do you spend on fossil juice? And how much does this thing depreciate? Those are the numbers I really want to know. Let's pull out of a T-junction and just put our foot down. Dear Lord, that was 50 miles an hour in that time. I can see that people become quite addicted to that, that sort of immediate step off acceleration because it's uncanny. The thing's heavy, really heavy. And that in combination with four wheel drive, and just being pushed into the ground by that mass. I think what people like me want to know is, is it actually any good to drive? Well, it's naffing fast. The steering doesn't really have any great life to it, but I can place it. And that weight does give it a sort of sure-footed feel on the road. It just feels squished into the tarmac. That's riding pretty well. It's quite a bumpy road. Okay, I'm impressed. Body control's pretty good. It doesn't need to go much faster than I'm going now. Brakes, it doesn't like stopping repeatedly from very high speed, but at these sorts of speeds, hey, you can sort of throw it in. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed by this. Do I mind that it doesn't have an internal combustion engine? Not really for doing this, because the cars that I enjoy the most that are in this class, you know, a sort of five, seven series size car. Well, engineers have spent the last 30 years trying to make the powertrains as quiet as possible, and this beats them all, because it's not making any noise. But in that time, my range has gone from 170 to 150. So I think 
we're gonna have a little charge and then have a bit more thinking about this very, very clever machine. This is the flagship Tesla Model S. That means all the power and all the range. It costs £130,000 and Tesla claims 0 to 60 in, wait for it, 2.4 seconds. Yes, 2.4 seconds. It weighs 2,240 kilograms, has a claimed range of 381 miles, but not if you use all of that performance. Top speed is 155 miles an hour. The power is rated as the equivalent of 603 horsepower, torque 713 pounds per feet. Technically, it's so clever, it really does make your brain hurt. Yet it somehow doesn't feel like an expensive car. The cabin is completely dull. Just some old Merc switchgear, a couple of screens, and some cheap leather. So this is a windy piece of road, and I have no idea what it'll be like down here. This is technical as well. This has been the undoing of a few quite good cars, so I'm fascinated to know what it's like. I mean, the speed is without any question at all. So we're through the full, we're through the full travel of the damper a couple of times. Not too bad. It's got an awful lot of compression damping in it. You can feel it, so it gets airborne and then it controls the movement very quickly, almost too quickly. And it feels like if it had a second input at that point, it might just give up because the damper's still dealing with the previous bump. But you can go really fast in this and it doesn't, it doesn't fall apart. It's not a shambles. I, I feared it might be, but it really isn't. But if you like going very, very fast from zero to 120 miles an hour, where you're allowed, there aren't many cars that can can do what this can do. But why is it it doesn't really doesn't light my fuse? I don't get excited about it. I admire what it can do, but it sort of stays there. The surprise of the package is how good it is on the road. There's something unnatural about the way that it takes these bumps, though. It's, it leaves you with quite a, a porpoising motion. And there are two guys in the car with me now, one recording sound and Nilo in the front. And both of them feel quite ill from the motion. And do you know what? I don't feel too brilliant either. Brutally effective thing. Brutally. Quite brutal on one's tummy as well. Because when we stop, these two are going to be sick. <laughs> 